We're all about the archers. I'm Philippa. And I'm Lauren. And we are here to talk to you all about what's happened so far in the archers this week. We will be particularly focusing on the episodes Sunday the 15th, Monday the 16th and Tuesday the 17th of September. You have been warned there will be spoilers. So Lauren, what did you think about the week? What did you think about tonight's episode? I... I've never been more disappointed in anyone as how I am disappointed in the way Eddie has behaved this evening. Despicable. Absolutely. First of all, the way he was talking about Susan and um, Neil, saying how they'd forced Emma into grassing up and all of this sort of stuff. And then the way he spoke to Susan was disgusting. I, awful. Absolutely awful. How did you find? How did you find it? Well, I've had to write in capitals tonight, which I don't normally do. Yes. Why does Eddie blame Susan and Neil? When will they focus on George? Because it's everybody else's fault. George, Eddie's saying that George is, you know, the innocent one. He's still a hero, and we can argue about whether it, it you know, how serious a matter it, it would have been if George had admitted it at the beginning, but. He has caused such chaos, as we heard from Adam for Alice. So now I think it's terrible. Absolutely awful. And I just feel like the whole sort of the people that are around George, Emma has sort of glimmers of understanding the sort of mm. the, the, the largeness, the magnitude of everything that's going on. But like Will, so naive, expecting all to be OK with Adam in particular, who's Alice's brother, just sort of saying, oh, like, her, him and Emma being in a bit of disbelief that they could potentially be charged. That happened at the end of last week. And then that, that going on now, like it's, I just think where have you all come yeah. from that you're so naive and how things Eddie was saying tonight about, Oh, um, George was only trying to help her speaking about <laughs> Alice. Well, could have helped her by not setting her up um, as, as a uh, potential yeah. murder suspect. Yes. Just absolutely abysmal. Like, I don't know where I'm gonna, where Eddie's gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive Eddie for that. And when all this started kicking off, we heard that you know this could affect Ambridge for the rest of the year. But actually, yeah. this could affect Ambridge for years. There's so yeah. many. I mean, I'd just been focused on the guilt, the not, the the court case. Mm. But this with all the friendships and... I know. Oh, my goodness. And How did you find the Fallon and Emma thing tonight? Well, I mean, I thought having bad Robert was weird enough last week, but having nice Tom this week... <laughs> but nice Tom really trying to get his business back yes. on the road. Like, he's, he's just thinking about the, the, the tea room <laughs> and how he can get his two best minds back at it. But I think I thought that was quite a big move of Emma to to quit and for Fallon then to thank her and I think they're both very aware of what has happened there and how mm. Emma the, the only resolution was that Emma should quit because Fallon can't pretend to like this job all the time and her saying it's put a real strain on her and Harrison's marriage which it absolutely has something I was surprised at is that I never considered Emma and Fallon to be best friends it seems like Fallon's got best friends all over the place <laughs> She mentioned that they were best friends, and I thought, oh, okay. Yeah, so I suppose they've grown up together. That you know, they've known yeah. each other a long time and worked together. But yes, Emma wanted to take over managing the restaurant, and if Fallon's going to go off and leave there anyway, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I hadn't considered that. I mean, it, I think it's right that Emma stepped down, but still, Emma, there might be a place for her opportunity pretty yeah. soon. I mean, has nobody heard of a job agency in Ambridge this week? With everything kicking off at Bridge Farm. I mean, no. they've got no Johnny, they've got no George, no Clary, no Emma, potentially no Adam. I mean, Bridge Farm is no just Will. imploding. Like, what's going to happen there? Yeah. Like, if, if, if you keep Adam, you have to get rid of Will, or if you keep Will, you have to get rid of that. Like, it's all, it's all happening, isn't it? I mean, one of them's going to end up in a hairnet in the, in the dairy with the intercom, aren't they? But it's just which one? Behind, in that fish tank. <laughs> It'll have to be Will, because Adam won't be with her. So Will is going to have to be making yoghurt. That doesn't fill me with confidence. Wouldn't Adam, I feel like... Adam would, un like, Susan is sort of the good person in all this. Like, she has... Yes, but at this point, he's, he's saying no. So I guess no, it's... No to anything. It's, 
it's too soon. Yeah. And he's seen Alice go through it and be there for her. Um, yeah. Let's just focus again on Will for a moment, if you don't mind. We've just heard about Bev. Um, now, I don't know if when you were listening, you've heard all about Bev and Will's wife, Nick. Yeah, so I, I listened, so I started listening um, and it was in the next year after I'd started listening that Nick died. So I'm aware of what happened there and the fallout from that and Bev being Nick's mum and, well, Poppy went and lived there for a while, didn't she, after when he had his sort of breakdown. So I am aware of Bev. Great. Um, and, and what, what do could you potentially th- happen there? Yeah, what well, I think- mean, I feel like I'm leaping ahead to predictions, Philippa, but I've got a whole list of like sort of ramifications. <laughs> if you'd let me leap, um, Go for all it. of the ramifications of like George's actions. So we've got loss of work. So, like we've said, I mean, Emma's just quit. I don't know how successful the tree surgery business is going to be with this hanging over them. Like we're saying, Will might have mm. to step down. George isn't working now. This sort of thing going on. Potentially, I think there's the option here that Poppy's going to have to go and live with her grandparents because if Will goes to prison, then that's going to happen. Or if they're concerned about her welfare, being around George maybe, then that's maybe something as well. I think there's potential that maybe Emma and Eddie could split up or Harrison and Fallon could split up. Like you said, there's all these friendships breaking up. Massive rift between Eddie and Clary and Susan and Neil, and I don't know how that's going to be solved. So this is just, and that's just like what I can see happening in the next few weeks. So this is just going to go on forever and ever. So there's my predictions of things that I think is going to happen, but... It's yeah, like like James said when we interviewed him, he said this is gonna shift the whole year, but this could go on for years, not mm. year. Yes, I in a way I'm relieved that Clary has gone to look after her sister, because if she was here and you could hear her being put under pressure and oh mm. Eddie and all of that, I just don't want to hear that. So no, hopefully things will calm down. Um, yeah. But I thought, you know, when Susan was saying to Will, oh, well, you know, George should show he's scared in court. They should realise. And Will said, I never thought of it like that. What is going on? Will's just useless, isn't he? But also, like, I've heard both Will and Emma say this week, poor George. And I'm thinking, yeah, poor Alice, poor everyone else, poor Fallon, poor Harrison, poor Kenton and Jolene, who's just like all of these people. But... Mm. Not poor George. Yeah, it. Oh, I wouldn't want to be around their Christmas table. No, so much worse for our George. They kept saying, oh, yeah, so much worse for our George. What do you think about no. Lillian? She's been very busy on the telephone this week. <laughs> on the voice notes? Oh, God, yeah. imagine. Katie would love a voice note from Lillian. She would be beside herself. But, she would. Yeah, you, could, you can just imagine. They're like little podcasts, aren't they? Yeah. Just her saying... <laughs> Exactly the same thing, but to yeah. various people around the copy village. Paste, copy yeah. paste. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God, you won't believe what's been happening. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. So, any f- faves this week? I've Anything... got two faves. I was delighted to hear a little meow in the pub. <laughs> New little pub cat. That was so cute. David and I were listening and he kept going, Those meows are so cute. And they really were very <laughs> cute meows. Desperate to know what they're going to name that cat. I thought we were going to get that at some point because they were saying, oh, what should we call him? They were calling it Catty. No, come on. You can Kitty do something cat. better than that. Yeah. Kitty cat. I'm looking forward to that. And also, a fave that links in with the food is apple and cheese pie. So I saw that there's been a lot of discussion on the Facebook group about apple and cheese pie as well. But <laughs> we had a Patreon event earlier this year. And one of, our pat- one of the things we talked about was what our New Year's resolutions were for each of us, sort of archers related. And mine was to be more Jill and to do a lot more baking. So I've been slowly, and I've been doing it. I've been baking my way through this. This is a, a visual if you're on if you're on YouTube. <laughs> Bonus content um, I've, for YouTube. I've been baking my way through the sweet um, the sweet roasting tin. And my next recipe, this is bizarro because I've been working my way through, apple cheddar and clove galette. No. Yeah. Are apple you go- cheddar and clove galette? You got to enter it on Sunday, Lauren. <laughs> you would win. So how- that that's the next thing that is serendipity and I've, I've never ever heard of an apple and cheese pie or apple and cheese cake or whatever they were saying but here we go that is the next one in my cookbook 
that's brilliant. And yes, you're right. There has been some absolutely award winning chatter on the Facebook group about combinations of yeah. particularly sandwich fillings and, and pie fillings. While we're talking about food, very briefly, I will just say profiterole, sack of tort, dessert, chicken, fruit pie, apple pie, apple and cheese pie, bizarre sausage rolls, Fallon's cupcakes, cake. Um, yeah, I just had tasty chicken, yummy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> do you think if there is a fruit pie category and someone's done fruit and cheese would they be allowed to enter that category i guess it's fruit yeah, if it's majority know. fruit if linda's judging it she'll be oh yeah. yeah it might not even get through but there we go yeah. did you have any faves philippa um, well, I'm afraid the kitty cat nonsense that I've written was a flop because I was just like, is this cat what person, I've got? Cat person, dog person. Yes. Cat person, dog person. <laughs> and I must apologise for anyone on YouTube because I probably won't be able to edit it out. There is the snoring of my dog asleep in this room and I can only apologise. We were having to whisper at the beginning yeah. so we didn't disturb her. Poor Gracie. <laughs> We'd clapped hands and that had woken her up. I got a filthy look, but never mind. Um, yeah, so I'm afraid the kitty cat, I, I didn't appreciate. I didn't see the point of this this cat and the chicken. I felt like they were wafting a whole chicken around and this cat was just like, no, I'm not having any, yeah. of, any of that. Okay, well, any other faves? Um, well, I suppose I've mentioned about Lily and phoning everyone. I was a fave to hear that George was in court, you know, to actually hear that he'd gone in and it was just a formality. So we're waiting, yeah. presumably, for the official case. They're all going on about, oh, how is he going to get on in Young Offenders? But in my Google searching, which is my Google searching now is terrible, thanks to the archers. But boys aged 18 to 20 could be sent to a youth offenders or to adult prison. There we so go. it'd be interesting. And if he's 19, that's... isn't he? So... Yes, he'll be 20 in April. So, you, you, yeah, he might get sent to a... A full I guess as well, as, as someone who isn't the mother or father of George, like in my mind, I've always thought George as very adult, like he acts very adult. He's sort of got these, the, the traits of him. He's not, he's not boyish, is he? I've never considered him sort of boyish, even maybe before we were hearing his voice. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like the writing's been really clever this week to have like three episodes where George hasn't been there, but I've still got this level of disdain about him because I'm hearing people talk about him and stuff. I'm like, that's very well done to not include the actor who's playing George and still, and I for think me still to feel... Uh. For me, George thinks he's mature, but that makes him more immature for me mm. because he just doesn't have a... A, a grasp on reality and just things. I guess for hide. a while I've thought he was dangerous, like for a long, mm. long time. I remember when we when we interviewed um, Emerald, who plays Emma. I mean, when was that, Philippa? That was was that when even was this that? year? Yes, I if think it was. It was, was early in the year. Um, and even then, I remember one of my questions pointed to her and I remember saying that I thought that he was dangerous. So, yeah, he's just felt... And you don't usually use the word dangerous to describe an, a child, do you? So We better move on to flops. Any flops that we haven't mentioned? <laughs> no, all of mine are about how naive I'm finding Will and how ridiculous Eddie is and, yeah, and just... Something I guess was, was very upsetting was hearing about Will and Emma trying to make plans for their younger children and I was pleased that they were sparing a thought for their younger children um but yeah what about you flops yeah I mean the, the Ed and Emma and Will you know Ed just seems like the saint at the moment and Will and Emma are not acknowledging in any of the conversations that how sorry they are for him and mm. the situation and the same Freddie Grundy, there wasn't Will when he was started talking to him before we heard Eddie really um, lose his mind. Will wasn't acknowledging that it's down to him encouraging mm. George to say so. You know, if Emma and Will had got George straight away as soon as they knew, I think that would have diluted mm. a lot of the reactions that they're getting. But uh, I don't know. There's just no thinking there's there's no thoughts going on yeah. um, and uh, the other flop that emma tried reading a book to take her mind off everything and it didn't work 
You've just not found the right book, Emma. That's that's no. all I'd say. What are you reading, Emma? Because it's <laughs> not good enough. I've just found our interview with Emerald, um, who plays Emma, was on the 4th of December. So it was a long time ago. But I will what? link that. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link it below. So if you'd like to go and watch that, it was great. I loved interviewing Emerald. Um, that'll be linked below if you want to follow this video up with the interview with yeah, Emerald. Yeah, she was fa They're all fab. They're, I mean, they're yeah. all amazing. So, star of the week. I've gone for Susan. Yes, actually, you're right. No, you're right. I should have done that. <laughs> Who have you gone for? Well, I couldn't bear to say Tom. I mean, he was hopeless tonight. So I'm going to say Johnny for staying away from Bridge Farm and keeping <laughs> yeah, the heck a, away. That's a great idea. But yeah, Susan, I felt like she really mm. went through it and she's really sticking to her guns and being very sensible, very mm. sensible about the actions that her and Neil took and why she backs Emma having gone to the police and things like that. I've... Yeah, I think she was star of the week for you guys last week as well, wasn't she? Or was I it the think week she was, but a lot's yeah. happened in a week. <laughs> it certainly has. <laughs> Predictions. Any so, left? I mean, no, I've gone through. I mean, I listed my list of things that I think are going to be because of everything that's happened here. So what are your predictions? OK, so my first one is that Emma won't be prosecuted okay. as she made the call, but will will be and end Ooh. up in prison. Okay. So that's one prediction. I mean, all my predictions are hopelessly wrong. So yeah, I, don't I guess have, I, I don't just considered hope. the pair of them as um, sort of guilty as one another because mm -hmm. they were both in on it. She made the call, sure. But yeah, I mean, she was. It depends what they said in the police room. Yeah. Emma was spilling her guts saying everything. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah. My other prediction is that Will will start making pottery items as apologies and go around the village handing out these. <laughs> awful horrific works yeah. of art so there we go and he'll, he'd probably think being as naive as he is he'd probably think that that would be all you need to do to get it sorted <laughs> he can do no more no. but that's it from us now saturday there will be nothing this saturday we can all pause for breath and have a have a rest next saturday there will be a bonus episode so don't worry about that on tuesday it will be all four of us celebrating what? one year of this podcast happy Mad, happy it? happy times there will be a patreon live event on the 18th of october at 7 30 links to that in the show notes and until then it's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from me goodbye, goodbye everyone <laughs>